Hi everyone, my name is David and this is the John 17 Project. Uh, this is uh, the second week of, uh, of our Bible study on unity. And I've remembered my microphone this week, so the audio should be much, much better. Um, so I've been trying to uh, slowly improve on things as much as I can with my phone right now while I do stuff to get myself a computer set up for doing this. So anyway, um, I hope that everyone enjoyed last week's Bible study. I know that uh, it seems like you talk about Bible study and people don't want to seem to watch these videos, but um, this isn't about what views or clicks for me or anything like that. This is about doing what um, the Lord has called us to do and called me to do and put on my heart and to facilitate and do so the verses for this week were in last week's description um, for those who may have not seen that we're going to be in first john today um, chapters two three and four um, i'll talk about this subject <laughs> so <clears throat> excuse me i may need to start doing these videos <clears throat> before i eat lunch instead of after <clears throat> because I seem to always get these fun little sinusy things going on sometimes. Well, especially with the weather around here being crazy. But anyway, so I apologize if if I have to take drinks and so forth throughout this. But I actually want to start today um, with some prayer first, and then we'll we'll get into it. So, Heavenly Father, we just um, ask that you would be with us through this time of studying your word. And more importantly, just let this, let your word, um, words be written on our hearts and just indelibly inked into our minds and our souls. And Lord, help us just to, as we feed on the truth of your word, that it would come into our hearts and that it would be what we speak and what we do. And that you would make us like you, that you would knit us together as perfectly one as you prayed for in John 17. And just lift up your body, Lord. Bring us together, knit us together as one. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So our first passage is in uh, 1 John. Sorry, look at my notes. Um, chapter 2, verses 3 through 11. So I'm going to read it here. The way we can sure, the way we can be sure we know him is if we are obeying his commands. Anyone who says I know him but isn't obeying his commands is a liar. Of course he's talking about knowing God. The truth is not in him. But if someone keeps doing what he says, then truly love for God has been brought to its goal in him. This is how we are sure that we are united with him. A person who claims to be continuing in union with him ought to conduct his life the way he did, the way Jesus did. Dear friends, I am not writing you a new command. On the contrary, it is an old command, which you have had from the beginning. The old command is the message which you have heard before. Yet I am writing you a new command, and its reality is seen both in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Anyone who claims to be in this light while hating his brother is still in the dark. The person who keeps loving his brother remains in the light, and there is nothing in him that could, not, could make him trip. But the person who hates his brother is in the dark. Yes, he is walking in the dark, and he doesn't know where he is going, because the darkness has blinded his eyes. I'm going to stop there before I read the next session. Just think about that for a second. If you're hating your brother, I like that part where he's like, I'm not giving you a new command, but I am. It's sort of, it's sort of John saying, I'm reiterating something really old that you've known, but through the personhood of Christ, you really should know this, and this is really what he taught. So let's put some extra emphasis on this. Um... 
And then he goes on to talk about if you hate your brother, you're not in the light, you're in the darkness. You're still in darkness. It's interesting because I remember reading this when I was looking, th when I was studying scripture on unity a while back and seeing what the Lord said about unity and division and everything that uh, is associated with that. And uh, this, pa this, this passage kind of struck me because if you're blind and you're lost you're, because you're in darkness be and it's obvious because you're hating your brother, it makes me question um, leaders in the body of Christ who are vitriolic and hateful in their speech towards their brothers in Christ because they disagree with them on a sec especially a secondary issue. It's not like you're calling out a false teacher. It's, you know, when charismatics say that cessationists are, are totally off and they're being hateful and vice versa when cessationists are saying that charismatics are demon-possessed and they're all going to hell and boy, believe me, that, that's been kind of stuff's been said and when Catholics and Protestants say hateful things about it towards one another, um... You know, there's there's all the and when different denominations all you know spat o spat over this or that and secondary issues and nothing that's really uh, of that kind of importance or just not even being willing to say, hey, I I don't see it quite the way you do, but I love you and I'm going to be your brother in a fellowship with you. And when I see leaders that have those kind of attitudes. It makes me seriously question whether anything that they're saying, anything, any of their books or their sermons or their talks should be listened to. Because if, they're hating your if you're hating your brother, Scripture is clearly saying that you're lost in darkness and you're blind. How can you see the Word of God clearly if you're blind and in darkness? How can you see the light of God's Word if you're lost in darkness? I don't think you can. Which means, you know, if, if you're hating on your brothers and sisters in Christ, and the, this is clearly saying that the light isn't in you and you're lost in darkness and blind, it, it, may, it should make you question your own judgment if that's something that you've struggled with um, or that you've been feeling towards a brother or sister. Is There should be some serious questioning of your judgment at that point. It's really something we should be humble about and and be aware of how that can obviously be blinded to the truth and be blinded to what's really going on and I mean just not loving it's amazing when you think about the implications of that just that you're lost and in the darkness and blind starts to speak about how serious of an issue it is to be in union with your brothers and sisters. Um, so this just kind of <clears throat> my thoughts on that passage just it's obvious that that this is a serious serious thing. First John gets more serious as it goes so that was like the that was like the the basic part about it. So our next passage is in First John chapter 3, verses 10 through 16. So let me get there here. There we go. 10 to, there we go. I'm just going to read it. <clears throat> here is how one can distinguish clearly between God's children and those of the adversary. Everyone who does not continue doing what is right is not from God. Likewise, anyone who fails to keep loving his brother is not from God. For this is the message which you have heard from the beginning, that we should love each other, and not be like Cain, who was from the evil one and murdered his own brother. Why did he murder him? Because his own actions were evil and his brothers were righteous. Don't be amazed, brothers, if the world hates you. We, for our part, Know that we have passed from death to life because we keep loving the brothers. The person who fails to keep on loving is still under the power of death. That's powerful. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. 
and you know that no murderer has eternal life in him. The way that we have come to know love is through his having laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. Hmm. Then right after that, he goes into practical ways of loving your brothers. But I'm just kind of... That's... Uh, John gets even more powerful in the... It gets pretty powerful in the language right here. That's very... Um, very severe. If you hate your brothers, you're a murderer. And... That... That uh, person who fails on keep on loving his brothers is still under the power of death. Wow. So not only is it, if you're hating your brothers, you're lost in the darkness and blind and there's no light. Goes on to say that uh, if you fail to keep on loving, you're still under the power of death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life in him. It's, it kind of goes... Um, it's it, Wow. That's just, you know... Just think about this. I read this recently for the, to prepare for this study and was just struck by it. I'm struck by it again reading it out loud about how powerful this is. Um, how severe and very serious this passage is. It's not... For, John is not mincing words or pulling punches in this. It's clear in this in this epistle that um, how how strong God feels about hating one another. Lost in darkness, you're blinded by it. You're not in the light. You're still. <laughs> You're still under the power of death and a murderer. I haven't even gotten to the last part of the passage, by the way, in this book on, on hating your brothers. Because First John really talks, he touches on it three times, majorly in this, in this book. Um, what do you think that means? Um, I mean, what does this say about the seriousness of division? What does this say about how pride and self-righteousness dividing over secondary issues and things that are not really important? Um, what does that say about that? What does that say about the Great Schism? What does it say about the Protestant Reformation and all the divisiveness that are that? What does it say about the division between the Jewish and Gentile believers and the First Council of Nicaea and how they intentionally were separating themselves from the Jews in a rather anti-Semitic, hateful way? <clears throat> what does this say about many of the early so-called church fathers, I put finger quotes on there, when they were speaking very hateful things about the Jewish people, the chosen people of God, people who have covenants with, with God. What does this say about all the leaders throughout history who have spoken hatefully towards their brothers because they disagreed with them on something? What does this say about each of us as lay people who don't have books we've written and any time we've um, we've felt that way about this group or that group or this believer or that brother, brother or that sister. It's uh, it's some hardcore seriousness. The Lord is is speaking in this passage. It also it just you know you flip this around. It speaks to how serious the Lord takes unity and how serious the Lord takes loving your brother. And your sister loving each other. And then, I mean, right after this, in verse 17, he starts going right into practical things to do for your brother and sister in Christ. 
how to take start taking care of each other and act in love. <clears throat> what are each of us doing in our own lives that are adding division? And what can we start doing to go in the opposite way? What specks or beams do we need to take out of our own eye? Well, what beams do we need to take out of our own eyes when it comes to this? This is something I even have been asking myself because I, I need to make sure that I'm not doing things to divide. It's one thing if we have different opinions and see things differently on this, you know, this point or that point. It's another to hate your brother or sister in Christ because you disagree or for some secondary issue. I know that's where a lot of people get fixated, but... You know, if we start getting into real life together and real community together and really come together, huh, stuff is just going to fade away because we're not spending our time fixated on secondary issues. We're spending our time in community with one another, loving one another, lifting each other up in the body of Christ, going out and preaching the gospel to all nations and making disciples. Man. Imagine if we were all doing those things. What kind of unity could we have if all of us lay people? Because I'm not a, I don't have some seminary degree. I'm not some preacher with a church or anything like that. I'm not some pastor or priest or reverend. I'm just a person who is a son of the Most High God who desires to see my brothers and sisters come together in the complete unity we're called to and ending all the divisive vitriolic crap that the enemy has sown it's all from the enemy I mean it's obvious from from here that that's from the enemy I mean don't be like Cain who was sent by the evil one I mean he's equating he's equating hating your brother with being like Cain right there you know, if, uh, if someone has, uh, let's see here, yeah, da, 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 da. person who fails to keep on loving is still under the power of death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. It's just really strong. So, pray about this this week. I really would encourage you all to pray about this. See what. What can you do to change things? If you're Catholic, talk to a Protestant. If you're Protestant, talk to a Catholic. If you're, you know, one kind of a cessationist, talk to a charismatic. Charismatic, talk to a cessationist. If you're Armenian, talk to a Calvinist. If you're Calvinist, talk to an Armenian. Come together as brothers and sisters and stop all this crap. If you're Orthodox, talk to the rest of us. The rest of us talk to you as Orthodox. You know, if you're Messianic Jewish, talk to those that are not. If you've never met a Messianic Jew or talk to them, I would go and learn. Talk, find, meet someone in your area that is in a different, different part of the body that had, grew up with different um, doctrinal th beliefs in you and that's part of the body, but somebody who professes Christ as Lord. It's amazing what we'll start doing together when we start having this attitude. But all right, last passage is in chapter four, fifteen through twenty-one. If someone acknowledges that Yeshua is the Son of God, God remi remains united with him, and he with God, alluding back to John chapter seventeen. Also, we have come to know and trust the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who remain in this love remain united with God, and God remains united with them. Here is how love has been brought to maturity with us. As the Messiah is, so are we in the world. This gives us confidence for the day of judgment. There is no fear in love. On the contrary, Love that has achieved its goal gets rid of fear because fear has to do with punishment. The person who keeps fearing has not been brought to maturity in regard to love. 
We ourselves love now because we he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For if a person does not love his brother whom he has seen, then he cannot love God whom he has not seen. Yes, this is the command we have from him. Whoever loves God must love his brother also. So that kind of sums it up. If you don't love your brother, you're not loving God. If you don't love your brother, you're a liar, a murderer, and lost in darkness and blindness and blind. And that's all just in 1 John. I mean, I could go on and on forever on the verses that talk about division, but this is I chose 1 John because he really hits, he hits it a lot in, the, in this book. So read through the whole thing so you can read it all in context. It's not a very long book. If you want to see it all in, it, in its full context, I definitely encourage that. Um, but it's clear in these passages that this is extremely important to the Lord. To the point that he says that, he says that if you fail to love your brother, you're still under the power of death and a murderer. I mean, that's, that's just really powerful language. I don't think, I don't know if the Lord can use stronger language than, than he does here in 1 John to emphasize how important this is. So I really just encourage each, each one of you um, to pray about this, think about this, um, and then do something. We have a tendency to sit around talking and thinking and praying, but then we don't put it into action and, and with the people around us. And this is something that we should do. If you have coworkers who are believers of other denominations, talk to them, get to know them. If you have friends that are believers of other denominations, same thing family members so yeah I just it just is clear in this passage and this is what I'm, I'm really walking stepped away from reading this again recently with is that it is abundantly clear from first John how serious division and hating your brother or loving your brother is to the Lord. Like, it's just abundantly clear. And we can't be so prideful that, well, we can't be, shouldn't be prideful at all, but we can't allow pride in our, what we think and what we feel, and it's all, make it, it's all about us. It's not about us. Christ said, take up your cross and follow me. Die to yourself and follow me. It's not about us. It's about him. He's clearly called us to be in unity. He's clearly called us to love each other. He's clearly called us to not be divided. Because if we are, if we're hating each other, we're liars, murderers, and lost in darkness and blind. So I would really encourage everyone to check your heart, your head, and your actions. And don't worry about the speck in a brother's eye right now. Make sure you're getting the beam out of yours first. Pray for one another. Um, I would really like to hear people's thoughts and prayers in the comments. Read those. Um, so please do comment, subscribe, click the like button, share this. I'd like to get more people involved in this. Um, I'm working on building a community on Locals.com right now so that we can do some more stuff off of YouTube. Um, and I'm also going to be building a Facebook group as well. Um, once I get those up and going, I will put links in the description so people can join so that we can really start talking to one another off of YouTube um, and get some things going. So anyway, I hope this is something that m makes you think <laughs> and feel and desire to get closer to the Lord and really, really 
think about how serious this is. Hope you all have a great week. I will be putting the scriptures for next week's session in the description below, so just look for that in the description. Um, and I will see you all next week for next week's Bible study. Have a great week. This is David with the John 17 Project saying bye.